everyone, welcome to Connected. I am Fabiana Espinosa and I'm ready to have a conversation with Katie Woodland. I invited Katie because of her tenacity to change a bad situation into strength, to study and to work that allowed her not only to cultivate herself, but also to help others. People that might need some guidance, some structure to achieve a happy, healthy professional life. She is going to tell us all about her journey as a psychologist, writer, and business coach. Do not go anywhere. Connected starts right now. Woodland is a psychologist and business coach. She helps determined female entrepreneurs confidently shed imposter syndrome, embrace their authenticity, and step into the limelight by mastering the foundational steps of a successful and profitable business so that they can turn their business from a money pit into a money tree and finally get their dreams off their vision board and into their reality. Carrie wrote the Female Entrepreneur Roadmap to Health, Wealth, and Happiness book, which contains 12 clinically proven therapeutic tools to help women through any emotional difficulties they are facing while walking them through 12 simple strategies to get their business back on track. It is my pleasure today to introduce Katie Woodland. She's talking to us all the way from the UK. Katie, thank you so much for the time you, you took to spend with us and for sharing all of your experience. There is so much to learn from you. Thank you. Let's go ahead with the first question. Tell me, how did your life lead you towards the path of psychology? Okay, so thank you. Um, so it's a, it's quite a hard hitting story. So um, apologies in advance if anybody gets triggered by some of the things that I'm about to say. Um, so we actually started out in retail, um, and I bounced around from different uh, retail jobs, and I slowly worked my way up the ladder to to be a manager, and I loved it. But if you've ever worked in any kind of retail industry, you'll also know that it's not as easy as just standing there. It's not as easy as just like wrapping a few pieces of clothing and then passing it off. And um, there's actually lots of hidden pressure. There's lots of bullying. Um, and so for quite a number of years, I was subjected to um, sexual harassment, um, like bullying. It was just quite a toxic environment. Um, and one day, about 15 years ago now, I was driving down the M6 to my job. So the M6 is like one of the main motorways and it was um, you know 40 50 miles I was traveling every day and as I was driving towards uh, my job I was getting closer and closer and closer and I started to feel really sick I started to feel really anxious and then I got this thought in my head okay well I just don't I can't cope I can't go there and what actually went through my head was if I just turn the wheel I can end everything and I don't know how to deal with it. And then the next couple of minutes, I was actually trying to work out how I could safely end my own life. And I know that sounds really strange, but I didn't want to harm anyone else. I was trying to work out how I could take myself off the road without kind of causing a crash. Um, but thankfully, the universe intervened and there was, there was all, it ended up being a traffic jam. And so I got wedged between a couple of lorries and I was stuck there for about five, Five, uh, for the first five minutes, I was still trying to work out how to um, get off the motorway. And then after about 45 minutes, I realized, you know what, I'm just going to get off the motorway and go home and quit. Um, and so I just didn't want other people to have to go through the same thing as me, you know. Um, and that's where I started to investigate the idea of psychology. Um, and at that time, it, it wasn't something you spoke about. If you were struggling with depression or stress, it wasn't really really something you spoke about. Now the problem was that I actually didn't finish college so I didn't have any A-levels and that meant that I couldn't go to university to, to be a psychologist um, and it was really interesting so I, I wasn't driving at the time 
and I was on the bus um, after my incident. I kind of stopped driving for a little bit. Right. Um, and so I was driving on the bus home and I drove we went past a school, which is a secondary school, um, and it had a big sign outside saying um, that if you hadn't done um, your A-levels, you can do an access course and go to university as a mature student. Um, and I was like, oh my God, like that's what I need to do. So I kind of worked out um, how could I make that happen? And so for the full seven years, I was um, doing you know, my undergrad, my initial training, my masters, all of those things. I was having to work you know, three or four jobs at a time to pay for it. Um, and then, you know, I was coming to the end and I just cried every single day for the last semester because I realized that everything I learned wasn't going to be helpful to the majority of people who were out there because the system just isn't set up right. So I decided I was going to go into an NHS led service so that I could change the system from the inside. And I'm so grateful to have worked with one of the world's leading feeding specialists for young people. However, uh, what what I suspected was true. The system was broken and after a couple of years I decided to leave and set up my own practice so that I could serve people in a way that was really, really aligned with who I am and actually have the impact that I that I wanted. And I'm so grateful that over the five years that my mental health service run, I actually helped thousands of people around, around the world um, and developed a really intensive mental health program which was taking people from suicidal to mentally healthy in just 12 weeks um, and then one of the key things is that my my whole reason for doing what I do is to help people really understand just how important their emotional health is to every other aspect of their life so it was a really kind of weird journey but I got there in the end right and it's very impressive because nowadays we speak a lot of mental health a lot and everywhere and um, what I really think that it's um, uh, brilliant in your case is that well, you went through all of that and you weren't able to get your mental health and also help people. But then you did another step and you kind of, you, you mix two worlds, business world mm -hmm. and emotions. So tell me, how was your journey becoming a business coach? Okay, so in one word, it was hard. <laughs> so one of the main difference between um, me being becoming a psychologist and me moving into business coaching is that I had years of training and qualifications and all of those things behind me. And so what happened really early on when I started moving into the business coaching world is I was struck down by imposter syndrome. Um, I genuinely didn't feel like I could do what I already had done with my own business and supported some people along the way. I felt like a complete fraud. Um, and the thing was like I knew and I genuinely hold the belief that female entrepreneurs are gonna change the world. You know, we're a force for good. Um, and the other thing was, you know, after working in a mental health service for such a long time, you know, my own, own emotional health took a bit of a battering because you can't help but take on somebody else's emotions they're struggling with. So I I wanted to be able to wake up every day and just do something that lights me up. And the real problem when I really got down to it is business coaching is such a saturated market. Like so many people get into coaching yes. um, and it was so difficult for me to kind of start out. Um, so I had to really look down and look back at my life experiences, all of the things that I can bring to the table and work out why I'm different. You know, why would you pick me over the thousands of other people to help you to get to where you want to go? Uh, and just as I was kind of launching, um, I posted in a Facebook group and I was like, hey, you know, would you hire a psychologist to help you with the business? And like 95% of people were just like, no. Like, you know nothing about running a business. And I was like, well, I built a business from the ground up that was really successful, so I do. Um, and so that really then knocks me again. 
Um, but thankfully, I had a mentor at that time, and she was like, "Just, just ignore those people. They're not your customers." Right. Um, and thankfully, went on to launch um, the whole female entrepreneur series, which we'll talk about um, later on, I'm sure. Um, but one of the the most amazing things happened is I managed to sell out my live program in just 12 hours on Facebook um, because I did all of the the background work, and I, I you know, I really, really invested in myself doing all of the marketing and really, really research and how I could be that different person for my customers. Um, and since then, you know, all the ladies who joined last year have had 100% um, financial return on investment, which is pretty much unheard of in the course and program world. But they also had a, an almost instant emotional return on investment because we do both things together. Right. And thankfully, after now helping like hundreds and thousands of, uh, sorry, hundreds of, um, of women, um, I believe in myself, <laughs> so that I can actually support other businesses. But yeah, it was very, very difficult in the beginning because there was lots of internal, what I call mind junk going on that I just wasn't good enough. I think it's so important, exactly everything you're telling us right now, because every single um, person, not only as a professional, should have a balance and should uh, acknowledge the fact that different areas of our lives, our emotions affect us, right? And that's exactly what we project, whether you have a family, you have a business, whatever, is the, whatever the case is, it's important to have that we have all of those aspects. So now let's move on to the third step that you kind of were starting to talk about, but how did you decide to focus your work in women? Yeah, so um, when I was running the mental health service, that was guys and girls. And this is not because I don't love working with guys, I do. However, we have to really, really own the fact that women and men are different and women and men have completely different needs. And right now, if you're a guy and you want to go start a business, there are so many people who support you. There are so many huge role models in the entrepreneurial world that are male. And I know that that kind of puts a lot of women off, that they, they don't want to follow this huge masculine um, you know, entrepreneurial typeface and, and it's just, there weren't enough women leading the way. Um, I don't believe women are being successfully served by the market as it is, although more female entrepreneurs are coming through and kind of starting to break that little ceiling. Um, but nobody's really addressing the real thing. You know, women, unlike men, tend to also be running the families. They also have to look after the household. They also have to get themselves ready, build a business, and it's it's a huge job. Um, you know, and, and this is something that, that most men, and this is not because they don't care, but they just have been brought up slightly different to the way that women are raised. Is It takes like an hour if you're gonna do the dishes, you know, morning and night, and you don't have a dishwasher. It takes well over an hour to do the vacuuming. Then you've got to do all the washing. And you think about all of those hours that you have to spend every day. The women were, um, that I was coming up were really struggling to actually put the hours in that they needed to learn all of the things that they needed to learn to build their business. And so I wanted to make sure that life didn't get in the way of all of the amazing women who had messages, who have you know, the ability in them to, to change the world by making an impact. So I decided last year that I was just going to focus on working with women so that I could make more of an impact. Um, and I just love working with women. It's nice. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> it is. And then let's go talk to your book. Your book is titled Female Entrepreneur Roadmap to Health, Wealth and Happiness. Just by the Ooh. title. It's it just sounds amazing. So tell us about about it. Yeah, so um, the Female Entrepreneur Roadmap to Health, Wealth and Happiness is a series. So there's a book, a members club, um, and um, a live program, and then there's one-to-one. -one. It's, it's kind of all of it, but they're each different stages. Um, so one of the key things that I discovered um, is that unless you are consistently um, bringing in streams of leads and sales, then they probably got one piece of the jigsaw business building puzzle that's just not right. Um, and what happens is when you go and buy programs and courses, you usually buy them and they're leveled up here and you don't have the basic knowledge yet. And unless you then have hundreds of hours to go through Google and YouTube and everywhere else to, to 
get your knowledge up to their level, most of the courses and programs actually don't make sense. So the, the book is all about going to the before, the before, the before, to the very beginning step and how to master it so that it works for you. Um, and that is, so it is, it runs 12 weeks. It's a 12 week, uh, everything is 12 weeks. Like whether you come through my program, it's just all set up like that. Um, and it runs concurrently. So one of the tasks you have to do every week is on your emotional health, helping you move forward and build your emotional resilience and hopefully let go of maybe some of the mistakes you've made and help you overcome any fears about moving forward. And then the other task every single week is moving your business on um, because one of the key things that I discovered while I was still transitioning is there was no point me helping somebody become emotionally stable and then nobody's sorting their business out because then the business becomes the problem um, so it's about moving it forward every single day every single step of the way um, and the really um, exciting thing is it's just about taking really simple tangible steps that are super powerful um, that will actually really really quickly make a huge impact on on your life and business um, and un unlike most like it's, not, it's, it's a real book which I love um, and it's literally just gone into edition number two so on the 28th of May the second editions come out with extra um, techniques and extra things and updates because I think that's what happens is somebody will launch a book and then the internet changes the world changes and you then end up buying a book which is just out of date so with all of your experience, let's say, mm -hmm. of course, you already mentioned that as women, we don't have, it's, it's not obstacles, but we do encounter some extra work, let's say, that we do at home <coughs> and we don't have time maybe to de like devote yourself to your business only. But not counting that, what would you say it'll be based on your experience it is what you see women struggling with the most. Mm. Um, and it's, it's the guilt. Um, and we call um, in the little firm community, we call guilt the big G. Um, because you want to do something on your business, but you maybe need to um, not go to watch your kids play in order to make that happen for those timescales. You know, vice versa, you want to spend time with your family, but that then means that maybe you can't serve the same number of clients. Um, and so we're always tossing everything up, you know, what can I do with this finite amount of time? So it is, it does tend to be the non-stop guilt of I'm not being being a good parent, wife, uh, partner, um, dog mum in my case, or I'm not actually bringing in the money because I don't know this, that and the other. And it's, it's always feeling like you just, you, you never feel as though you have made the right decision. You know, you're always feeling guilty. Well, I left my nine to five. I put our family in this position, um, and that then, you know, leads you down quite a quite a scary cycle. Unless you know how to kind of come out uh, out the other side. But yeah, it's it's the guilt. It's just it just racks so many female entrepreneurs so much that they usually end up giving up and going back to a job because it's just easier. Right. And on the other hand, for that. <laughs> What would you say? I know we don't have the time like to dig in and to go deep onto the onto the topic because the guilt, what you said right now, it is it is an everyday, let's say everyday remedy or everyday problem that we all deal with it. And some of mm. us are okay to accept it and, and say and do something about it and others we just deny it and we just rather stay on the safe place and say oh I don't want to feel guilty so I'm just gonna stay here and do what I do every day and don't take risks so mm. when we talk about being a little um, we're taking action towards the guilt what mm -hmm. would you recommend like you should like put on your day every day, let's say an action or a, a thought, what would you recommend? Yeah, so one of the, the main things you need to do is acknowledge it. Um, you can't ever overcome something that you're not paying attention to. And there's a huge thing in the self-development world where people are talking about limiting beliefs. And they only ever talk about your negative beliefs. Um, and what most people don't realize is that actually sometimes the positive beliefs you've been trying to train in also then lead to guilt. So say, for example, um, you've been saying to yourself, you know, I am a successful 
successful um, female entrepreneur. And to you, successful means working nine hours a day, bringing in a certain amount of money, which you're trying to work towards that, but while you don't have it, that's triggering the guilt. Um, we all know about the negative ones, but that's the one thing is I would say, if you're, you've got goals and you're not hitting them or you're starting to procrastinate or you notice low motivation, then it's time to just sit down and be like, okay, so what are the beliefs that I believe right now about being successful? You know, what is going on both positive and negative and then start redefining them so that they're achievable redefine them so that they make sense and stop being quite so specific you know i i've noticed that when we get really specific you know about like i need to make a certain amount of money every single day and when that doesn't happen jeeps like the throwback emotional throwback is beyond so just say hey as long as i'm making some money every day and it, it allows you to be open and it allows you to just move forward so stop being so specific start paying attention to what you're telling yourself positively and negatively um and then slowly work towards it but most importantly acknowledge it and know that it's okay know that you are doing the best that you can with the knowledge you have and know that if you just keep moving forward and taking those little baby steps it will happen it has to happen right katie what i really think i admire the most thing i admire on you is that even though you have had uh, difficult experiences and maybe even a certain type of trauma you were able to make that you to turn it into a complete different energy and to make it your make it your profession like from that you got a strength and you turn it into something else so tell me how do you keep yourself inspired what i know you told us your story before but years have years passed and you're still on the path of positivity and you know giving that and sharing it with people so what do you do to keep yourself inspired well, one of the main things I do is I'm, I'm not a hypocrite. So um, I do all the things that I tell all my clients to do because it makes you feel good. Like there's, there's no two ways about it. But the way that I stay inspired and the thing that actually gets me out of bed every day and sometimes gets me doing like, you know, a 24 hour stint is by um, the results that my clients are getting and knowing that I am making an impact and I'm, I'm making an impact beyond the impact impact that I see um, and every day when I hear about a new result or the way that something's changed maybe something's shift emotionally or maybe something's happened in their business like that's the thing that drives me to just keep going um, and keep moving forward and I think when we shift our focus from serving ourselves to serving others but in a good way so it's not about always putting everybody else first you know the key thing is that you make you feel good and then you have the energy to go out there and spread your wings and shine your light and then allow others to kind of lift up and i think we tend to put other people first at the detriment to ourselves but you are the most important you in your world and only when you are fully lit up can you ever serve anybody else? So always, you know, it's not selfish. I put me first and then I give um, 100% to everybody else when I can. That's great. And really, it makes total sense. Katie, thank you so much for the time you spend with us. I'm going to give you space so you can um, share your social media information. Go ahead. Awesome. So you can find me um, across all social media channels. So I'm on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and you can literally just find me anywhere. <coughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Katie. Much success. And I hope you continue to help all of the female entrepreneurs in this world. A big kiss into the UK and bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So very happy to have met Katie. Gals of the world, there are people that are studying and working hard every day to assist you. So if you are one of us that have that pending project or those crazy ideas in the head or just have a poor internal dialogue, reach out. You will not regret it. To connect with me, write to conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com or send me a private message on my Facebook page. 
stay connected and until next time with me. Bye-bye.